him how we need it done and what we need done and when we need done and where we need done. And we expect an immediate answer, that answer, not an answer, but the answer because too many times we believe that we know the best way to take care of the problem. Oh, I got to thinking about this thing here and, and how the Bible tells us, if you read this chapter here in Mark chapter 4, it tells us that they had been in a long days of, 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 of ministry. They had been through a long, hard day's work. Oh, I got to thinking in my mind here, John chapter 4, it tells us that Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria. He's been on a long, hard day's journey, and the Bible says he being wearied sat thus at the well. It tells us that Jesus in his body, he will get weary himself. So that's why we see now after a long day of ministry that Jesus looks at the disciples and he says, let us cast over to the other side. Oh, it's not just so that they can get away from the throng of people. It's not just so they can take a break and take a nap. They have somewhere they have to be. They've got somewhere they got to get to. But in the process of time, since it's going to take a little while to get there, Jesus goes to sleep. I take from this to show that everybody in the house of God tonight, we need to know that at some point in time, we need to rest. At some point in time, we need to just take a moment, get our bearings about us, and get ready to get back out there. Oh, but I got to thinking about this thing here now. Oh, Jesus has gone to sleep on the pillow, and this great storm has risen up in these disciples' life. And I'm going to get away from this and we're going to get back to it a little later. Oh, but I feel like the bombarding of all hell, it seems, has come against us. The bombardment of all hell. Oh, it seems like it's rushing against the city. It feels like the soldiers have surrounded us. It feels like we've been besieged. We've stretched ourselves thin. Mark 2, where we at? We're at the house in Capernaum. And Jesus is ministering to the people. He's preaching the word word to them. But then they go through and there's miracles that take place. He preaches along and in Mark 3 when he's preaching, there's a man with a withered hand that's in the crowd. Miracles taking place. Things happening. Folks, his eyes being opened. And then here he's preached all day long. A long hard day. But now, right now, in this very moment, after seeing miracles, after seeing revival, after seeing things change, here here comes the enemy, friend. I want to tell you, there ain't going to be always a wonderful reprieve at the mountaintop. There ain't always going to be a complete and utter deliverance from the fight. We're going to have to go through things. We're going to have to go through storms. We're going to have to go through trial after trial. But then there is that moment where we can just take a break for a second. What did they expect? I'm getting way ahead of myself, but I'm just trying to obey the Lord here. Yeah, come on, Sitting and standing there during the song service, over and over my mind, what manner of man is this? What manner of man is this? Oh, I tried to look it up in the Greek. I don't have the exact word for manner. Oh, but you can you can decipher where that's going. What type? Where did he come from? Who is he? Oh, friend, if you'd go with me, uh, or, or at least just listen to me very carefully for just a second, Psalms 89 and 7, it says, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Lord God of hosts, who is a strong Lord like unto thee, or to thy faithfulness round about thee, Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. Oh, they're asking what manner of man is this? Oh, but as I sat back there and stood back there and wondered and pondered, and this phrase goes over and over my head, I can tell you exactly who he is. From when Satan befell from heaven, he beheld it. He watched it take place. He said as lightning, he saw him fall. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him is life. Oh, and his light, he shines in darkness. It said in darkness comprehend 
comprehended it not. Who is he? He's the light. He's the word. He's the part of a son. He's the spoken word. He's the bread of life. He's the bread of heaven. There's many names for him. Isaiah said his name shall be Emmanuel. His name shall be wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God. The everlasting father, the prince of peace. There's many questions going through your mind. There's many wonders about the child, the star. But friend, I just want you to think on this is who he is. Hallelujah. So where is their expectation? Right, come on. You've got 12 men that are walking with him and watching what he can do. But where is their expectation? Oh, if they really expected him to be able to do what he did, they wouldn't have had to worry so much when they did. Where is your expectation? Or what type of expectation do you have tonight? I thought about some different circumstances in the word. The first one I thought of is there's the expectation of death in 1 Kings chapter number 19. The Bible tells us how Elijah has flown or or flew the coop or fled or however you want to say it. He's gone deep into the cave trying his best to find a reprieve from the storm, trying his best to find a breathing point because Jezebel wants his head. But in verses 11 and 12, it says, And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and the great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. Oh, what's going on here? Elijah prophesied, uh, told the king there'd be no rain for a span of time until God said uh, there would be. It was about three and a half years. Uh, He goes and tells the king that now we're going to have a challenge. Uh, Let's go up on the mountaintop. Uh, What is he doing? He's standing firm uh, against those things the queen is trying to bring in. Uh, He's standing firm uh, against... uh, uh, a, 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 a yellow bellied a, a flimsy backed a king that wants to not do anything and stand up uh, for what is right he's just standing there firm uh, foot planted on a solid rock we're going to have a challenge uh, and what does he do at the end of chapter 18 uh, before he prays fire down from heaven there was a process uh, it says that he took the stones uh, he rebuilt the altar of the Lord which had been broken down uh, said he took the stones and he placed them in order then he took the wood and he placed it in order and then he cut the bullock up and cut him in pieces and laid him on the altar and then he took 12 barrels of water and he covered it with those 12 barrels of water oh and then after digging that trench and filling it up with that water and letting that meat soak he prayed 63 words he said Lord let the people's hearts turn back to you let them know that thou art God again oh and fire fell from heaven then he goes up the mountain you know the story I know you do he goes up the mountain sends Gehazi up or Elisha up or whoever the servant is it don't say but he sends him up seven times as he's praying with his head between his knees and finally there comes a cloud the size of a man's hand oh all the while I wonder if in his mind he's wondering what's Jezebel going to say about this How many times do we experience the verge of breakthrough or a chip in the wall? We've almost broke all the way through it. But in our mind, all we can think is what the enemy is going to say about it. In our mind, all we can think about is what what we can perceive and what we can understand. Oh, God didn't really say this. Or God, God, he can't do this. If I don't feel it like this, then it didn't happen this way. If, if If I don't see it like this, then it didn't happen that way. Friend, too many times we compare ourselves among what we can feel and what we can see but God does not operate on that realm so when Elijah goes by what he can see what can he see he can see 450 prophets of the Baal he can see the prophets of the grove they're doing their charismatic swaying dance they're screaming to the top of their lungs they're cutting themselves and doing everything they can do and nothing happens so then after he does it the way it's ordained to be the way it's supposed to be 
and fire comes down from heaven. Oh, if all we can do is go on what we can see, then why don't we just hunker down and watch what God can do? Why don't we just why don't we just say, hey, I'm going to push the thoughts of the enemy out of my mind. I know the enemy's on my trail. I know the devil's trying to get on my back. Oh, but I'm just going to keep on until God turns this thing around. I know I've been threatened. I know I fear for my life, but I'm just going to keep on until God turns this thing around. Stress is a killer. I believe it's Matthew 24 where Jesus even says that men's hearts will fail them for fear, anxiety, and stress, and the build up and not knowing and wondering, questioning. If we ain't careful, we'll bring our own selves into a further hole. We'll bring our own selves into a deeper valley, into a harder time, simply because we try to piece together the things we can't understand. But what does God have in store for Elijah? was in the cave God's plan although there were steps to get to God's plan God's plan the fulfillment of it was not the altar getting rebuilt the fulfillment of God's plan was not the firefall the fulfillment of God's plan was not to test the servant's faith and to send him up seven times the fulfillment of God's plan was not even the cloud the size of a man's hand breaking a three and a half year drought and bringing down uh, the flood. The, the test of, of God's plan uh, won't even the fact that Elijah outran the chariots of Ahab. Uh, God's plan uh, was to get Elijah to the cave. Don't look at me like a calf at a new gate. I'm trying to get somewhere. God's plan was to get Elijah in the cave because if Elijah gets to the cave, then he can hear the voice of God. If Elijah heard about Sunday, it's in the cave that Elijah gets his orders to anoint the next king. It's in the cave that Elijah gets his orders to find the next prophet. All the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Yes, there's an expectation of death. Yes, there's an expectation of fighting. Yes, there's an expectation of the enemy. But if you'll just let God order your steps and you'll push the fret of the enemy out of your mind and just keep hunkering down until God turns it around. Oh, you say, preacher, he promised it a long time ago and I just keep struggling. I just keep fighting. Coming down 95 today. I had a vivid picture of Elijah. As some dark clouds rolled in. Thunder clapping. I believe it might be the first time in my life I actually saw lightning flash in the daytime. But the dark clouds directly overhead were so dark that even though just a half mile up the road you could see sunlight and a bright cloudy day, lightning struck down over in the distance. And for the first time in my life, I got to thinking, you know what? Even though I see the clearing, it might not be clear just yet. Too many times we've said, I have arrived. I have gotten where I need to be. And then not long after our hopes are shot down and we get bitter and offended at God because things didn't work out the way we thought because truthfully all that happened was we jumped the gun. We thought the firefall was the breakthrough. But it still ain't rained yet. Or we thought the rain was the breakthrough. But Elijah's getting old and he don't know who's going to come after him yet. But if we could just learn to just push the enemy out of our head and just let God have his way. Push that expectation of death right out the other side. Push the expectation of failure right out the other side. 
push the expectation of the enemy on your back right out the other side of your ears oh and let God have his way friend you'll be able to see some things accomplished oh but as I got to the edge and saw the clouds it got nice and sunny I was on the phone with a preacher friend from North Carolina oh and before we got off the phone lo and behold we come out of the cloudy sunshiny big blue sky and we were right back under the dark gray with the thunder clapping and the big raindrops are falling what am I saying I'm saying I know that we expect to be in the free and clear but sometimes we're going to go from victory to battle real quick sometimes we're going to go from peace to storm real quick sometimes we're going to go from struggle to pain and from pain to struggle and we don't understand why and we don't understand when the reprieve's going to come and we don't understand what God's trying to do but just remember the steps of a good man are ordered by the law there's a woman Matthew chapter 15 she's got an expectation about her and her expectation is got to have a change I'll read you six short verses. Matthew 15 and 22. It says, And behold, a woman of Canaan come out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. I want you to focus for just one second before I move on to the next verse. She didn't come praying for herself. She didn't come begging for herself. Have mercy on me. My daughter is vexed. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. What did happen here? What did happen here? Four things in six verses. Number one, she prayed. Number two, she cried. Number three, she worshiped. And then number four, she believed and trusted. Why? Because her expectation was change. She didn't come to him for anything else except to receive change. She didn't come to him demanding. She didn't come handcuffing Jesus, all slapping them cuffs on his wrist, leading him to the problem, saying this is what I need. This is when I need it. This is how I need it. This is where I need it. Friend, that didn't happen. She just prayed. She cried. She prayed. She worshiped and she believed. If we could move on from the house tonight that you desire change so bad that you're willing to say Lord you don't even have to have it all done at one time I'd be happy with a crumb I'd be happy with just a little bit of a breakthrough I'd be happy with just a little bit of reprieve if I could just get a crumb because crumbs fall from the master's table and dogs can lick them up. You know what would happen, friend, if I could just get a crumb tonight? I'll come back tomorrow night just looking for another crumb. I'll come back tomorrow night just wanting just a little bit more of what I got last night and come back Saturday needing a little more than what I got Friday and come back Sunday needing a little more than what I got Saturday if I could just expect change from the master. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Lord, I just need a touch. I still believe you're able to do more than I can even begin to fathom. I still trust that you know what's best and my footsteps are ordered. But Lord, I need a crumb. Now we're here in the scripture. The disciples' expectation here, it's not death. It's not even change. They, their expectation is immediate deliverance. They cried. He answered. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. One writer said what they lacked and what they needed most was complete confidence in him to walk by faith and not by sight, remembering that the heavens are higher than the earth. So his ways were higher than theirs and his thoughts as well. One commentator I, I saw, he said, true faith would have led them to believe that he could preserve them even in his sleep. true faith if I really believe he's going to deliver me then it would be to believe it before he shows up believe it before he steps in believe it before you pray believe it before you open your mouth believe it before you step in the doors believe it before you raise your hands believe it before you gripe and complain believe it before the situation changes friend if we're going to believe that he's able to do it without even batting an eye then we must believe that he can do it before I ask him Behold, have you not heard, saith God? Have I not yet proven myself? Have I not yet come through for you? Oh, thus saith the Lord unto thee this night, I will, I will, I will, saith God, do what I said I will do. I will show up. I will Come through for you if thou wilt trust me. If thou wilt completely and wholly seek after me and my will. If thou wilt completely and wholly walk in my steps. If thou wilt completely and wholly sell out to my way. I will come through for thee, saith God. I have not left thee. I have not forsaken thee. I have not turned my back on thee, saith the Lord. I know thy very steps. I know the way you should take. I see the problems ahead, saith God. And I will come through for you, saith the Lord. Church, can I get you to stand and lift your hands for just a moment and reach after God? You're facing a great storm of wind. You're facing a great trial. 
you are facing great circumstances. You are facing a dire situation. But the Holy Ghost has come out here this night to encourage you to expect the unexpected. Right here in this very text, verse 36 of Mark chapter 4 says, And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. You feel all alone. But there are other folks affected in your storm. And the Holy Ghost just said, if you will, he will. I've got a whole lot more I can say, but I don't feel. Jeremiah 33 and 3, he said, call unto me. And I will answer thee. That was the very next thing in my notes. And I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. The Holy Ghost wants you to know that he will, if you will. If you can push the thoughts of the enemy out of your mind. If you can come seeking a change and expect the unexpected in your life. This altar's open right now. I beg you, would you be willing to come up and say, Lord, I turn it over to you. Lord, I'm going to seek after you. Lord, I'm going to push for you. Your will, your time. Your... in the calm sea with Jesus the disciples were getting concerned the wind started violently blowing but he was asleep in the stern does he not care that we perish we are helpless we're so afraid Jesus arose when they called him. He said to them, where is your faith? Because you prayed all night. Because you've held on with all of your might. Child, your cries have awoken. Master, 
It hit you without any warning. The storm of your life had begun. Seeing no hope in the distance. Frightened with nowhere to run. By now your vessel is filling. You're thinking you'll surely drown. You cried out for help from the Savior. You know you can't give up now because you've prayed all night. You've held on with all of your might. Child, your cries have awoken the Master. He knows your voice lift your hands it's time to rejoice child your cries have awoken the master Trust. 